I've been trying to avoid this um, just because it's so overplayed and it's just the same arguments over and over again. Talking about the block size um, again, right? With with fees going up because of um, subjectively garbage data um, being put into the uh, into the blockchain. Um, essentially, fees are going up, and the big blocker narrative is is that oh well, this is unsustainable, and you need to make bigger blocks because soon nobody is going to be able to afford to transact on Bitcoin. Yep. Before we even start this, we're, I'm just going to tell you right away. You, you want it? You want to think about the block sizes? You want you want to have these discussions? Don't even waste your time having these discussions until you've read the block size. Where? Oh no, but Phil, I understood. It, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter what ordinal shill told you that something something would play out differently. It doesn't make a difference what ocean mining is doing and what Luke Dash doing. It it it's irrelevant. Go read the block size war or listen to the block size war, whatever it is. But what you need to do is educate yourself on the history so that you don't sit here wasting your time. That's how I'm starting this one out. So block size war. If you haven't read it, if you haven't listened to it yet, read it and or listen to it and or both. Do it multiple times. Anyways, and no, I'm not sponsored by Jonathan Bayer or anything like that. I'm just, I found this book incredibly helpful and it, Really, um, it made things much clearer for me. Anyways, let's dive into the whole block size. I'm not going to go through the entire history of the block size war, but I did pick out some choice, uh, I guess, some choice pieces to illustrate the point, okay, that this is a fucking giant nothing burger, okay? It's already, it's already been overplayed. The shitcoiners harp on this because they can grift you into another token or or the ultimate right the icing on the cake would be to somehow co-opt bitcoin which they cannot do we are magically wisped back in time to the bitcointalk.org forum and we're looking at uh, and we're looking at uh, jeffrey garzik's uh, original original post we should be able to at least match paypal's average transaction rate and this is to the discussion of increasing the block size limit. That was on October 3rd, 2010. Satoshi responded back on October 3rd of 2010. We can phase in a change later if we get close to needing it. Now, here we go. This is Jeffrey Garzik, okay? Pay very close attention to this because this is almost entirely, and I'm not saying... A, a, this isn't a judgment about Jeffrey Garzik, but I'm talking about the narrative, okay? This is the bullshit that the shitcoiners use over and over again. In my opinion, it's a marketing thing. It's tough to get people to buy into a system if the network is technically incapable of supporting high transaction rates. The irony of this is that the average person has no fucking clue, okay? Has no idea what transaction finality is, okay? So we actually exist in a world of for lack of a better term, partially signed transactions, meaning that these transactions are allowed to go through, okay, with one party validating it until everything is confirmed. I'm not talking about the Bitcoin blockchain. I know that I just confused these two terms, but I want people to realize credit card networks do not offer transaction finality. If you're comparing Bitcoin to a credit card network, you're being disingenuous, number one. And number two, you don't understand why Bitcoin is, okay? It has nothing to do with the credit cards. That is a layer on top. There is no transaction finality with credit cards, okay? They, there's no actual transactions that settle on that network. It all goes down into essentially your bank account because not to get into this whole rigmarole about the credit cards, but uh, essentially... Credit cards are their own entirely separate network, okay? That, that's all it is. And what the banks do, okay, is they pay MasterCard and Visa and American Express, believe it or not, okay, number one, to be able to issue cards with their branding. And they also, yes, that's right, the banks pay to use the credit card networks, so when you see a bunch of people in crypto crying about transaction rates and stuff like that, you don't even realize that your transactions aren't final right now. 
So stop pretending. Okay. It's a, it's a giant, it's a giant LARP. I know this stuff pisses me off so much. And it's not like I'm some genius about this. I, I, I'm i not. Okay. I, I just try to stick to the basic things that I understand. And transaction finality is something basic that any one of us really can understand. Anyways, so Satoshi's further remark about the marketing problem, okay? It can be phased in. It can start being in versions way ahead. So by the time it reaches that block number and goes into effect, the older versions that don't have it already are obsolete. When we're near the cutoff block number, I can put an alert to older versions to make sure they know they have to upgrade. So here's another early Bitcoiner that chimed in and goes like this, okay? And keep in mind, this now is from February 25th, 2013. Satoshi is no longer part of the picture anymore, okay? Satoshi wrote that over two years ago, and we still aren't actually close to needing it yet. And what he's talking about is the block increase, the block size increase, okay? Still, I guess it mostly depends on how many more years it's going to take before someone actually goes out there and signs up Walmart or President's Choice or A&P. Are they still even around? Or Sainsbury's? I never even heard of that. Or something and actually shows us a little of this vast flood of users they keep yelling is going to descend upon us any moment now. So far, it seems possible the volume of ranting about vast numbers of users coming to us is actually inversely proportional to the number of users the ranter actually has signed up, lined up, ready to bring on board. That's right. This whole block size thing, this is concern trolling, okay? And what, what that does is, is that you create the idea of a sense of urgency, something that must be solved today. And in order to solve this thing today, you must give up some of the integrity of the way the system works so that you can address this concern today without actually knowing if it's a real concern or not. Is it a real problem? More discussions, right, on the... Uh, on the block size, let's dive into it. So here we're at the Bitcoin Stack Exchange, okay? And this is from, so here we go, guys. This is already um, from a couple of months ago even. Okay, so here we go. Why is there a block size limit and why not increase it? A block size limit is necessary to avoid a trivial DOS vector, okay? And what a DOS vector is, DOS is denial of service. Okay, a denial of service attack. First of all, we should ask the obvious, what for? Such a change comes at the tremendous cost of a hard fork. There is nobody in charge of Bitcoin to say starting tomorrow, block can be twice as large. Therefore, the upsides of this increase should at least compensate for the cost of the hard fork. I'm not aware of any upside to an increase in the block size limit, which I would consider meet this bar. In addition, there is more cost to a block size increase than the sole use of a hard fork. It would proportionally increase the maximum rate at which the UTXO set can be bloated. It would increase blocks propagation time, most likely leading to further mining pool centralization. It would increase the barrier to entry for running a fully validating node. These are all the things that we've talked about multiple times. And, and this, this piece right here, Okay, about the propagation times. So a, a lot of people, um, I shouldn't say a lot of people, but many, many noobs that come to Bitcoin that don't necessarily have a background in networking um, or computer science or anything like that, um, they may not understand that there's something called uh, inherent latency, okay? So all around the world, okay, no matter how fast your router is, okay, no matter how much memory you have, no matter how much CPU you have, no matter how powerful your network card is, there is something called inherent latency, and that is the amount of time that it takes for a data packet to cross from one end to the other. Now, you can go and take a look. You can Google Verizon uh, inherent latency statistics, and you can see exactly how long it takes for a packet of a certain size to go from one end of the world to the other. Now, what would happen in this case if the blocks become too big? OK, is that that latency becomes more and more of a problem because what happens is, is that as the blocks get bigger, OK, the latency impacts how many blocks can be sent, OK, because of the amount of data that's in them. So what happens is, is that in the pools themselves, you're going to have a backlog of these blocks waiting to propagate because of the network latency. So, yes, 
Smaller packets, less data is obviously easier to send around and easier to keep um, from centralizing. There is also more subjective objections to increasing the block size, which I don't think even need to be considered in this context. These include, for instance, uncertainty about miners' revenue in a low or post-subsidy world, or the fact that the fiddling with the block size is tweaking the market for block space, which is a can of worms in itself. What is the right value? If it's modified once and some potentially unrelated bad things happen, there will be a lot of pressure to modify it again, which we've seen over and over happen in the ETH world. In conclusion, I believe the block size was never explicitly increased through a hard fork because it does not pass a technical risk benefits analysis, and the technical community members did not yield to the huge amount of pressure that was once put on them to disregard the costs. At the end of the day, Bitcoin is a system in which all full participants validate store and broadcast all the on-chain transactions of every single other participant. This obviously cannot scale only by increasing the number of on-chain transactions each participant can make. That's right. It, 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 is, it is totally a false narrative, this block size bullshit. Here is an interesting take from August 17th, 2015, Nick Zabo. For the people who don't know who Nick is, I definitely suggest you look him up. I have a great video that I'm going to be uh, showing a little clip from. Okay, this is from an interview that he did with Tim Ferriss and Naval. I'm not a big fan of Naval. Um, but uh, essentially, um, yeah, he goes on to explain a little history about block size and how much of a giant nothing burger it is. Anyways, Nick Zabo, block size increase a huge security risk. The biggest challenge ahead isn't bringing Bitcoin to the people or some such nonsense, right? And this is what all the shit coiners, this is always what their narrative, the adoption, the adoption narrative. It's, it's so important that we get it to, into as many people's hands as soon as possible, okay? And, and, and it doesn't matter. We'll take away all of the features that we need just to make sure that it becomes the most popular. So stupid. Anyways, the biggest challenge ahead isn't bringing Bitcoin to the people or some such nonsense. It's in maintaining a sufficient number of nodes to relay and verify transactions. This is challenge. This is a challenging issue that has yet to be fully addressed. Yeah, that's right, guys. It took me forever to dig this up. So you're welcome. Okay. Anyways, uh, this is from Tim Ferriss show interviewed Nick Zabo. And uh, this is from August 11th, 2017. And specifically, okay, uh, specifically at the 4541 mark, he begins to discuss some of the issues. And, and let's, let's listen closely. Misconceptions or common misunderstandings related to cryptocurrency or Bitcoin. Or, or like, what do smart people get wrong? Uh, if, if there's anything where you're like, God, this like X drives me nuts. If I hear one more person who should know better. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could get into the whole block size issue because there's this parameter. Um, we shouldn't, but I probably will talk about it a little bit. <laughs> there, there's this, there's this, it's a technical security parameter. It's called the block size. How the general public glommed onto this, I do not know, but there's, <laughs> there's a, an obsessive group of people who, think of this as some kind of artificial barrier to more transactions per second on Bitcoin. Really it's, it's job is it's, it's a fence preventing um, people from overwhelming flooding the network with, with lots of transactions that the full nodes I talked about can't handle that, that transaction history keeps building and building. Yeah. At a very simple level, if, if every computer is storing a copy mm -hmm. of every transaction, then you can't have, an infinite number of transactions because right, the computer right. will explode. Mm -hmm. And so what you do is if you if you keep increasing the number of transactions too too quickly, then you only allow a smaller and smaller shrinking set of computers to run the code. Um, oh, look at that centralization. Look at that. And this was this was guys. This was six years ago. Okay, six years ago we already had this debate with much smarter people than you or me. Okay, people who actually worked on Bitcoin, actual cypherpunks. Okay, so I'm not talking about Naval, I'm talking about Nick. Um, so look, and again, I'm not saying that we should just take their word for gospel, um, but if you look into their arguments, they, they make the most sense. So anyways, guys, I, I hope that you found this clip helpful.
like subscribe. I do this. I do this because I love to do it. And the only thing that I really ask for in return is that you subscribe. So please help me out like, and subscribe. And guys, don't forget this clip was brought to you by fellow Bitcoiner and pleb full throttle hodl reminding you to go fuck yourself and stay sovereign guys. I will catch you all tomorrow.